walked all of seven and a half feet across this aisle, <laughs> and I'm here with Mr. Tory. How you doing, Dan? Uh, all right, man. Good to meet you. So, uh, like I said before, we're just walking around ACA, looking at different products, seeing what people brought. Why don't you tell us about what you brought? Yeah. So we, our company's called Microair. We manufacture okay. the Easy Start, okay. which is a premier soft start kit. Okay. Uh, made in our plant in Allentown, New Jersey. All right, that's good to know. Absolutely. Uh, designed in our plant in Allentown, New Jersey. All right. So what we do is we manipulate the startup cycle of your condenser. Okay. So our standard startup cycle on any condenser, you hit your lock rotor amp speed, which is in this case for this condenser supposed to be 75 amps. Okay. Now the power here is pretty clean. So it's coming out a little bit lower from our runs so far today. So reset the meter, take a listen to the startup, and watch the meter. Okay. 62.8. That's your standard start on this system right now with this level of power coming in. Okay. You heard how the unit took off. Yeah. Sounded a little bit like a jet engine. Yeah, it always boom, boom. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So we engage the easy start, reset the amp meter, now, when I press this button, the Easy Start's going to have a five-second time delay. It's going to be checking for overcurrent. It's going to be checking for short cycling. It does that to protect the condenser from damaging itself. Uh-huh. At the same time, it's going to be reducing your start amps. Okay. So when I press this button, you're going to listen and watch. 3.1. Thirteen, twenty-three, and that's your peak. Wow! 23. All right. Huh? Depending on the tonnage, we get a sixty-five to seventy-five percent reduction in start amps. That allows your condenser to run on off-grid power. I was going to ask you about that. I saw. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's on your banner here about generators. So it I was is. really it interested is. to ask you about that. Uh, it allows your system to run on smaller off-grid power sources. So most homes nowadays get a 22, a 20, or a 24 kW generator uh -huh. or a 100 amp solar battery. Okay. You now need half of that to operate your condenser. Mainly because of that, that hard that startup start. spike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, okay. as you saw, we went from 66 amps yeah. to what, 23? 23. Yeah, 23. All right. Interesting. At the so, same time, go ahead. you heard the noise reduction with yeah. the Easy Start. Hey, yeah. That's about a 50% reduction in noise at startup. Okay. Now most you, most condensers live where? Outside. Outside, but right next right next to what typically? Oh, next to a brick wall here in Texas. Most of the time you see it next to the primary bedroom. Okay, all right, all right okay. Next or, to my son's room in my case. Or <laughs> next to a really fancy deck that okay. people like to hang out on. Yeah, my sister uh, built three uh, lattice covers to cover various air conditioning units at her house. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And she did that not just for the looks, but to reduce the noise. Uh, well, the Easy Start can reduce the noise even further. That's incredible, yeah. At the same time, there are many homes built before 1990 that still have 100 amp or 50 amp circuit boxes. Yeah. You try running a three ton condenser off of that, and you're gonna get dimming lights, or you're gonna have lights that turn off completely yep. when your system kicks on. We eliminate that issue as well. Wow. So um, I see the, the Bluetooth logo on here. Yes. What does that mean? We have Bluetooth diagnostics. Okay. So when you are within Bluetooth range, approximately 10, 12 feet, uh -huh. uh, you are able to pick up the specific easy start that you're connected to okay. and review its history and see its live data from its last startup cycle. Is that an app that you guys have? Yes, available on the App Store or the Google Play Store. It's a free app. It doesn't okay. cost you anything. Uh, and through that app, you have the ability to upload the entire history of the device directly to our main office for, anal for analysis. Okay. Shortly after we receive that, you'll receive a call back from our team telling you if there's anything off in your system. Oh, interesting, okay. So you can, what parameters do you guys read? Is it incoming power? Is it, um, is it temperature overload? Uh, what, what, all, what all kind of stuff do y'all look at? Uh, there's a variety of components uh, that we check. Uh, probably best answered by Nick. 
Okay. <laughs> so I'll hand it over to Nick at that point. So the, the question was, is what, what parameters do you guys look at? He mentioned the, the report that gets sent over to you guys' office. Sure. And then, uh, you know, in a couple of days, y'all call a technician back or a business owner back and say, you know, hey, this here doesn't look right or everything looks good. What, what all parameters do you guys look at? So what we look at is we can, we can measure the motor speed. Okay. And when you measure the motor speed, you can infer a lot of information about how it's performing. You can okay. measure, and along with that, you measure the current as well. And those two things, you can see, like, uh, you can infer, oh, there's a voltage spike. Oh, there's, when this, uh, on this particular start, there was a stall. Or it was running for some amount of time, there was a stall. Okay. So you can, when you see those things, you can infer things like, oh, maybe, um, maybe the refrigerant's low because this stall uh, could, would cause something like that. And that's what okay. you want to check. Uh, maybe there's a low voltage condition. Uh, okay. And you can say, well... That happens sometimes. The power goes out for a split second, and that's one of the protections as well. Is when that voltage goes away, it'll uh, it'll cut the load, wait a few minutes, and start it right back up. Prevent damage, prevent it from fully stalling. That kind of thing. Wow. So, okay. So for the technician or the business owner installing this, what all does it take to install it? Uh, what all is this um, a spider web of wires that's going around? Has sensors everywhere, or is this right. just a standalone unit that we see right here? Yeah, it's the standalone unit. It's a four wire hookup. Oh wow! Okay. Two of the wires uh, power the device. Mm -hmm. So many systems have a contactor. You just put it right on the contactor. Okay. For power, the other two wires go into one of the windings of the motor. So they're, in particular, they're wired in series with the winding of the motor. So you okay. take the winding off. You'll insert the easy start and you'll put the other wire back to where the run winding used to be. So it's a, it sounds could be complicated, but yeah. for most installers, it's about a 15 minute job. If you have a homeowner who's interested, maybe 25, 30 minute job. We have wow. all kinds of installation resources online, wiring diagrams, installation guides, and of course, you can always reach us if you need help installing the unit. Okay, so then of course this, um I only see one unit here and one part number, so this is universal for everything. Yeah, so it's a. Uh, there are a few part numbers you look on. on oh, the okay, box I see. Here. I see. Okay, I missed but that. But for the home units, there's really only two. There's one for four to six ton, and then there's oh, this I see one. Here. Yeah, thirty six three ton. Yep, thirty six, forty eight, and seventy two. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. Um, the innards, circuit board, and all that are the same. But what changes is the uh, capacitor in the box. They get a little bit bigger. They get a little bit smaller. Sure, sure. And they tie to the load that they would expect. And this looks like a real high quality box. It looks, you know, like yeah. it's got weather sealing in. It's all stripped up. I see the, the black foam in there. Yep. Um, yeah, it's uh, IP65 rated, which is okay. for uh, normal weather events. You don't want to bring a pressure washer to it. Okay. But other than that, it can be mounted outside. Often in the bigger units, you'll have a bigger electric box. You can uh -huh. even put it in there. There might be space under the electric box to put it. Um, okay. But that, some people mount it like this. Some how long people, is the, the whip that comes with it? I believe it's about 48 inches. The, oh, wow. That's so the you, standard length. So it doesn't have to be on the unit itself. No. It can be uh, some people, if it's close to their house, they even mount it on the house. Some people have a pedestal that uh, comes up out of the ground. They'll mount it to that. Okay. Um, we also are soon coming out with a board-only version so that it can be mounted in the electric box. But that's oh, interesting. That's, uh, okay. This one's more geared towards homeowners, uh, service techs, uh, where they can put it into existing installations. Okay. But uh, one day there will be a board-only option. Put it right in the electric box. Oh, Usually that's a professional cool. will, would install something like sure, that. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, having a 48-inch whip on it, uh, the yeah. first thing that came through my mind is, you know, you have your uh, your disconnect switch or your, or your pull-out switch and just have that right next to it. Yeah. Uh, run those whips together, wire time together, nice clean installation. Absolutely. That's cool. what we do at our office. The building's close enough, that's what we do. Follows the wire right up under into the electric box. And so how old how old is the company? Well, the company, uh, or which our owner is still with us, uh, or still the owner, uh -huh. same owner, from uh, about the mid-80s. Oh, wow. Started in his garage. You know, with his wife, and, and that's how the business began. Okay. I think he was a, a he started in sort of the marine industry doing okay. uh, technician work and started doing controls in that industry, started doing thermostats, control boards, stuff like that. Okay. And this is one of our, our new products. This one's about 
10 years old as a product. Really? Okay. It started as a, a Coast Guard for them in their boats and stuff like that. Interesting. Went to the RV market uh, and the consumer marine market, and now we're in the home. So Awesome. Added Bluetooth, added all this kind of yeah. stuff. So <laughs> keep, keep iterating. Well, that's cool, cool, man. Thanks for your time, Nick. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank we'll you, be Danny. in touch. Thank you.